Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. We hope you find something that will touch your life today and tomorrow. Faith is Alive Ministries is located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. You may visit us any Sunday for worship service, which begins at 11 a.m. And now, open your hearts and your minds to the spirit of a living God. First of all, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we thank God for this, another day that he has blessed us with. And above everything else, we want to thank you for, for tuning in to our, our first Baptist broadcast here with Faith is Live Ministry. We pray that all is well there in the homes and the families and as we continue to embrace uh, and the, the uncertainty that is going on ahead of us as we look toward the, uh, amen, the near future. Uh, the Word of God is our, our refuge, and we draw nigh unto Christ, and you know, we're looking for His return uh, for His church. So we want to be, keep this a wake-up call. This is an awakening time period, and, and we want God to just continuously bless us, even in the midst uh, of our storm. So uh, we invite you to open every heart and receive the blessing that is set before us on the message for today, and learn how to and. and be able to just get loose and let go and let God have, uh, amen, his way. Um, okay, we see you at the end of the service and uh, enjoy the presence of the Lord. Give you glory, honor, 
and praise. As these ministries of God, these vessels that you will use on tonight will be a blessing to mankind, to each family, to every soul, and to all of us who allow God to be a portion of our lives. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Yes, sir. Which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to look into your precious truth, God. Ask that your Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and teach tonight, Lord. This what's being said would be nothing but what you said, God. Bless this time we have together in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Well, the Lord has been gracious, faithful, unwavering to us for another whole year. Bless you. As we are approach the threshold of a brand new year, if it be the will of God that he should bring us across the threshold, we should come across the threshold with a renewed mind. All right. Amen. Now, I know that there is a tradition, if you will, that people make what they call a New Year's resolution. But I submit to you tonight that God is not impressed with your resolution. <laughs> God wants you to make a commitment. Yes, sir. So why don't you throw out what you had last year to consider a resolution and make a commitment for this brand new year if the Lord allow us to come across that threshold into the new year. And not only that, it says in verse 2 and verse 1, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least we can do, present our body as a living sacrifice after all that God has done for us. All right. And it says, be not conformed to this world, yes, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Go ahead, preacher. <clears throat> and when I got to that portion there, it brought me back to what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians verses 
3, uh, chapter 3, verses 13 through 14, the Apostle Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, uh -huh. but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He says, I press toward the mark That's for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Many of us may have had some hang-ups in 2020, but God <coughs> wants you to leave what was in 2020 in 2020 and come to 2021 with a renewed mind. Ah. See, we don't have to have a church full of people to have a revival. Come on, son. If you want to have a real revival, why don't you just talk to the three that matter the most? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Behave yourself. If you get to communion with them, you will have a revival. Yeah, see? Yeah. At that point, we should have a renewed mind. And Hebrews will tell us, let's not get so entangled with the things of this world that we can't worship God like we ought to right. worship. All right. Man. So I don't know how far you was from him in 2020. But 2021 should be a year that you draw closer to him than you ever have before. Now is the time. God has given us another opportunity. Hopefully, uh, probably another year that we may move up in our relationship with him. Yes. Increasing our knowledge of him. Increasing our understanding of him. And increasing our faith and our love for the Lord. Because certainly he has been faithful to us. When we start out 2020, there are some people that we started out with that's not with us now. But see, God has been merciful to you and I that we can stand here and say, Come on. Lord, you have been faithful. And I'm going to make a commitment, not a resolution, a commitment yes. to serve you like never before. Lord, we just want you to hear the cry of our hearts as we move into the new year. We know that there is much work to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Lord, help Jesus. And God, we want to be that servant of yours working in the vineyard to reap your crop, Lord. And Hebrews tell us in chapter 12 to say, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is yeah. set before us yeah. looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God so whatever weight or whatever sin that had you entangled in 2020, right. leave it in 2020. Ah. Press forward like Paul said. Press on. Yes. Leave those things behind. Whatever was back there in 2020, let it be back there. And move into 2021 with a refresh, renew, renew. and a commitment uh -huh. to give God the best that you are. And uh, Romans said, present your body as a living sacrifice. Sometimes, we have to let some things go. Go ahead, preacher. And you can let everything go, but don't let Jesus go. Ah. See, because you're going to need him one day. You're going to need, you need him now. Ah. I don't know about you, but I need him every minute, every day, or every hour. And my commitment is that I will commit to the Lord here before you tonight that I will be deeper in my studies. Come on. Sir. That I will be deeper in my meditation. Go ahead. That I will be deeper in my service. Uh -huh. That I will draw closer to him that I can be the vessel that he wants to use and the way that he wants to use me to help further his kingdom be on earth. Can you make that commitment? Throw no, out the resolution and get on your knees and make the commitment. God is pleased when you commit. But remember, when you make a vow to the Lord, you must keep it. Yes, sir. It's not like we're talking to our friends. We can make a vow or we can make a resolution and two days later we forgot that we made a resolution. Right. We're back to where we started. Come on. But this is not what God is looking for. He's looking for you to make that commitment to say, Lord, I commit this thing to you. 
And for the rest of my life, I'm going to be committed to do what you command me to do. Because I didn't have to love you, but I did. So now that you know that I love you the way that I do, why don't you just at least make that commitment to now, for now, and keep that commitment? Because one day, you're going to have to stand before me and give an account. If your account was just that, Lord, I made a resolution year after year after year and haven't kept one of them. So what good is that? But Lord, I made a commitment yeah, now yeah. that I want you to help me to keep. See, when we make a commitment to God, you're not saying, well, this is something I can do. You're asking God to help you make that commitment so that you can remain steadfast and true to him and do what he wants you to do. As I bring this to a close now, uh, we're about at the 10 minutes limit which we had to speak tonight. But just be reminded, Paul said, one thing I do is forget those things which are behind and press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, so whatever it is that was dragging you down in 2020, leave it there. Uh, and step on up and be renewed in the mind and make that commitment to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, all your soul, and all your life. May God bless you as he sees us into the new coming year. Praise God. Amen. I bless you, everybody. Amen. Just over the hill. Lord, over, over the hill. Would you like the extended warranty? 
But we must be aware that this extended warranty comes with limited benefits for a limited time. But I want to introduce you tonight to the benefits of a warranty through the blood of Jesus. Come on. Yeah. As we look in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we see that there is a benefit for trusting in the Lord. Yes. See, to trust in the Lord means you have identified where your help comes from. Come on, come on. To trust God is not just about you. See, God is not that simple. Hmm. See, if you don't believe it, go over and ask Joshua. When Joshua, God told him, just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Yes, he did. So when we come into trust in God, it's not so we can act like we have arrived. But so that we can get a fellowship and a relationship that we can lead the masses to God's purpose. Oh, yes. That's what Joshua did. Joshua led Israel into God's purpose. Uh -huh. Because he seeked God's face. He was willing to do what God has called him to do. Thank you, Jesus. See, your trust in God is much bigger than what you can see through your natural experiences. Come on. Your natural experiences comes with limited abilities. See, but you and I have been called to the front line. But the benefits of being on the front line is not so you can get fat off the hog, but so you can get prepared and equipped and poured into yeah. because there is a multitude that you are called to. Come on, yes. Then Proverbs go on to say, with all the heart. So the benefits of trusting God with all your heart is to understand that God has a purpose and his purpose is in the blueprint. Yes, it is. Come on. See, James tell us that if we're going to trust God with all our heart and we want to experience the benefits of trusting God with all our heart, we must learn to be a doer of his word and not just a hearer. Go ahead, go ahead. We must learn to apply the word of God to our life. See, sometimes we can't experience the benefits of trusting God with all our heart if it costs we are following the wrong footprints. Come on, come on. What size shoes do you wear? <laughs> and whose footprints are you stepping in? Lord Jesus. See, these benefits come with you being called to live according to God's standards. See, when you say, I want to experience the benefits of trusting God with all of my heart, yeah. you have come into the realization that one day, you and I will have to stand before the judgment seat. We will have to give an account for the dash of our life. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about we want the benefits of trusting God with all our heart. It's going to cause us to align up with what thus says fix the it Lord. Up, fix it up. The third benefit here is benefit of leaning not to our own understanding. See, the more we focus on God's purpose, you will begin to understand your purpose. Yes, yes. See, the more you begin to get in the line what God called you to do, you begin to understand that your purpose is servanthood. Ah, preach. See, according to Psalms 37 and 23, uh -huh. the word says, the steps of a good man ah, are ordered by the Lord. By the Lord, yeah. And he delights in his ways. Mm. So if you want to experience the benefits of leaning not to our own understanding, we must realize that our steps have already been ordered. Thank you, Jesus. We must realize that the game plan has already been written. We must realize that all plays have been put on the field. The question is, are you willing to get in alignment to have an understanding of what yeah, God has called yeah, you yeah. to do? Yeah, yeah, come on. See, we got talking about the benefits of Leaning not to your own understanding. Oh, have mercy. See, as we begin to decrease, 
more and more upset. Stop being anxious in the storm. Listen more to Holy Spirit. Yeah. Is that then we begin to experience the benefit of God's loyalty from a place we never had it before. Huh. What are you willing to do? How are you willing to change your dance steps? Tell it, tell it. Whose team are you willing to play on? How are you willing to dress? What is your dress code for understanding God's benefits? Mm. The final piece to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 about the benefits of the warranty. The benefits of the warranty through the blood of Jesus. It is God, the benefits of acknowledging that God in all our ways. See, we have to realize that apart from God, we can't make it. We have to realize that we are the branch, and he is the vine. And the branch needs to have some nourishment from the vine. So apart from the vine, I cannot survive. See, Jesus said in 15, 5, yeah, yeah. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. Yes, yeah, sir. He that abides in me, uh -huh. and I in him, yes, the same bring forth much fruit. <laughs> Say that so far. Hallelujah. See, we got to realize that we want to experience these benefits Hallelujah. of the warranty that comes with the blood of Jesus being shed on the cross. We must get in line with who we're going to trust. Are we going to trust the words of mankind? Or are we going to trust the word from the blueprint? If we want to experience the warranty of the blueprint, we're going to have to realize that we're going to have to change some things away in our heart. We're going to have to begin to allow God to get in that clean things up. That's it. See, we want the warranty. We want the benefits. Ah. But are we willing to renew our mind to the way God thinking? Oh, yeah. See, we want to experience these things that require us to not to lead to our own stinking thinking. Yeah. What are you willing to do? How are you willing to do it? And whose authority are you trying to do it in? Jesus. See, these benefits of what Christ did for us on the cross are eternal. Yes. So you can't begin to put your mind or your little mind around the benefits that we have. Yes. It's not like the insurance on the house. It's not like the warranty on the car. Uh, it's not like the 401 k on your job. It's not like anything in the earth. This is eternal. This is divine. It is oh, infinite yes. and it's unstoppable. These gifts through Christ brings change in our life. Mm. A renewed mind by studying his word. Yes. Spending time with him on purpose to fulfill his purpose. Yes. See, we have access to him at any time. So much more that sometimes we take that access for granted. All right, all right. See, we are truly blessed through Christ. Mm. We are truly blessed men and women of Christ. Jesus. See, he don't discriminate. This warranty for men of all color, shapes, and creeds. Mm. Boys, girls, any and everybody. God has no certain role that he would go to. All right, all right. He said, come unto me. Come unto me. That's all you got to do, submit and yeah. be willing to yeah. follow what God has called us to do. See, but it's not like when you call in to um, sell yourself or sprint, saying, hey, my phone went dead. Huh. And they got to ship you something out. Lord, It'll take you. three or four days to get to you. See, but when you call on the warranty of the blood of Jesus, there is no three or four days waiting. You have immediately access. Huh. The question is, do you want to get in a position and sit down to enter into a place where God can pour everything you need into you? The benefits of my warranty through the blood of Jesus. God bless you. Come on, somebody help me praise about that. Benefit. Only what God can and will do. Come on, let's give up and hurt a hand. I feel like gold going on. I feel
religion out there. And I know that God will make a way somehow. In spite of what we may have gone through the previous year, what we presently may even be going through now, God has a way that's mighty sweet. We're not going to hold you too much longer for the time midnight comes around. Praise God. We want to be able to be on our knees and there with you in your home in the solemn portion of prayer. We certainly thank Reverend Barry and Reverend Hearn for such an awesome and blessed message. Sets the pace and it makes it very fortunate for us even on tonight. And even as we work toward the, the broadcast and the ministry of the media as well as Brother Hearn who diligently have worked throughout the year and since this pandemic has started helped us to keep and stay alive and be on the radio. But I submit to you, amen, that you ought to stand still and get ready to see the salvation of the Lord. For the preaching as what you just heard prior to uh, Reverend Hearn even coming up, there's more to come. Get in the mood of, amen, getting ready for fellowship. Because soon and very soon, God is going to open up the doors around America. Not only around America, but he expects you to come in out of the rain. Do not anticipate staying, amen, in the view of Israel for the rest of your days. Because just like the children were in the wilderness, wandering 40 days and 40 nights, amen, we've been wandering in the wilderness of a virus uh, that has affected us worldwide to include the churches, families, homes, death, sickness, marriages, lives have been changed. And poverty has even risen that much more. So during this holiday season and the new year, and amen, it's not a resolution that we're going to try to give you, but ministry like this uh, is going to cause us to raise up. And a new birth will take place in a portion of our lives as God blesses America, the land of the free and the home, amen, of the brave. For a few minutes, amen, we're just going to come before you with a closing summary in the message, not summarizing the two messages prior to, but amen, just to get a key focus, and, and really you can call this something from, amen, the pastor's desk, but from the Bible directly. I'd like to draw your attention after this word of prayer, amen, to the Revelations 21, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 4. Father, open thou mine eyes that I may see your glory and wondrous love and what you've already not only told John on this island of Patmos, but what you have revealed to us in these perilous times, uncertainty have come to and before and around, and we have seen death, amen, right at our back door, front door, to the front, rear, west, north, south, and east. But follow through it all, we have learned to trust in you. Now, Lord, move in a special way, move that we might know the truth, and the truth will set us free. This we ask in Jesus' name. Somebody out there say, man. And for a few minutes, amen, until we get right up to that very few seconds before midnight, because we want to be on our knees when the midnight rolls in. Here on the hour of Patmos, there in the 21st verse, correction, 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming, down out of the heaven from God, good God Almighty, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the, the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with men, or with them, and they shall be in his people. And God himself will be with them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, nor sickness, no more, for former things have passed away. God here is revealing to us, amen, not only from John to this island, but Patmos was a, just like a small island where John had been put into exile, but these revelations came to him directly Amen from God. But we want to use this passage of scripture and a scenario, amen, that we may use a variety of scriptures connecting 
uh, that, that we can send a message to the world and to this community as well as to mankind. Five steps to eternity. Amen. Five steps to eternity. I, I, I often wonder why and what and how we think what eternity will be like. We get a dose of it every now and then, but only the believer can see this uh, from any aspect. And because once you have been born again, there's a new revelation on the horizon. And that is that we can see uh, the coming of the Lord. And in his coming, he's going to be dwelling and coming back for his children. But out of these five steps, in order to get into eternity, there are things that we must do. There's probably many more in the Bible, but we are just going to focus on these five steps to eternity that we should press toward and into the new year, not into the future, but into eternity. First of all, that's prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer unlocks the door. Prayer moves lives. Prayer keeps us in connection with God. But most of all, if we don't pray, we cannot expect to hear from God. And hearing from Him, we have to pray without ceasing. Here uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, it reminds us to pray without ceasing. It doesn't say pray 24-7 a day, but your prayer life ought to be the life that connects you with God day in and day out. To pray without ceasing, before you do anything stupid, pray. Before you get an answer to a prayer, pray that God is giving you the answer. Before you move into a decision or a situation, know that God is your helper. He's your guide. And He is your all in all. But not only prayer, but in the prayer that you pray, the second objective is to have a purpose. There's a purpose in prayer. You don't call on God unless you know Him. You don't call Him. Don't even use His name unless you have a connection with Him. Because it becomes surface prayer and surface blessings. And God don't deal with no surface blessings. He deals with the depth of where your relationship is with Him. And in Him, all things are possible. There must be a purpose in your calling on Him. There must be a purpose, good God, not only to your life, but He made you for a purpose. And that purpose was to dwell, be in Him, be for Him, and most of all, Work while he's working in you. Joshua found out that news here in the third chapter, the seventh verse. Said God will be with you. It doesn't matter if you're on the mountaintop, in the valley. Your life is low. God is still with you. If you're high on the sea and you feel like you just can't go no higher, God is still there, but not too high that he cannot humble your heart day in and day out. There is a purpose. Ecclesiastes and then my there's a season for everything. And no doubt you go, good God, why do we have to go through this? In this season, God has a way of getting our attention. This don't have to be a punishment to any portion, but he is God. And I don't question what he does, when he does it, or even how he does it. But I know one thing, he will be with you. As he was with Joshua here in this passage, he will be with you. Thirdly, not only prayer purpose, but we've got to have some power. And I find out if you fill up on high tests, the engine runs good and it runs a little bit better as the pistons begin to bounce against each other. You can put mid bait in there, it's still going to do a job. But you put regular, you're not going to get the performance or even the mileage that you've been trying to get. We're talking about an engine. The same way the engine works with power, but sooner or later it's going to run out of Fuel if you don't refill it again. So it is with the child of God. You cannot have power in this life without a connection with Jesus. The power came from the cross when he laid there for you and I. Only son, he sent his only son to give us that power. That power comes through the, the Holy Spirit. Much prayer, much power. <coughs> Purpose brings on how and when you pray, but in the course of it all, you have to believe, hallelujah, what you're praying about. So in the power that, that you have embedded inside of you, it cannot come to surface, amen, unless you ignite with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to be, you must be, you've got to be born again. Surface Christians 
would not understand this. What do you mean, Pastor, surface Christian? Why you come and sit in the pews but no church is in you? And the church can't get in you because you don't let go and don't want to let go of yourself. You don't want to let go of yourself because it's too much for you to give up. You look back on the world and figure that it has more to offer you. But all the world has to offer you is just corruption and control. And Satan knows how to use both of them tools against even the child of God. No doubt during this pandemic you have been bewildered. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm getting ready to close this out now. But the power that I'm talking about is when you kneel and pray, when you kneel for a purpose, when you kneel in prayer, and when you kneel and know that this power can come from God, you've got to believe that he will supply your every need. Paul here in the Second Corinthians, there in the 12th and the 9th chapter, he said, my, my grace is sufficient for you. It was grace that brought us, saved us for. The very same grace will lead us home. You've got to have grace. You've got to have power. You can't fight the devil on your own. You can't fight him in your flesh. You've got to fight him in the spirit. Then, my brothers and sisters, no wonder you don't have no praise. No wonder you can't get your praise on. Because you forget where your power is coming from. You lose the purpose of why you're even here on earth. And your prayer life is dim. All because Satan put everything up against you. And sometimes you even feel that there is no God. But let me tell you, God is still doing miracles. God is still working uh, on you and I. God is still not only doing great things, but he's got you out of your bed this morning, started you on a new day. Prayer, purpose, prayer, power, praise. Get your praise on. When something is going good in your life, you run and yaddy, 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 tell the world, this is happening, but as soon as a little problem comes along in your life, you want to shut your mouth. You ought to be able to praise God in your bad time as well as the good time. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him late in the midnight hour. I find out that here in the passage of Scripture, there, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, God gives us a, 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 a thanks in everything. No, that you thank, you, some of folks don't even thank God for the meal that they had today. So I'm scared to thank him for last night's sleep and this early morning rise. But you ought to be able to thank him because he saved your soul. And when you got saved, it just doesn't stop there. You just keep on pressing on. Finally, know that how the connection makes it. As I come to a close here, in summing it, it all up in these five steps with prayer, purpose, power, praise, God has a promise. He told you and I, not like he's saying right here, this 20 First chapter, there on about the fourth verse, he said he will wipe every tear that you had to shed. He will dry every eye and bore some sorrow, some grief, and some pain. And he will heal. It won't even be no more healing because you always change in the twinkling of an eye. God knows how and what he's doing. Not only that, he promised even at late, early in Testament that, that, that you uh, have a purpose. You have a life. You have a substance. And in the coming of the new year, get out of the old slumber and slouchy way that you've been doing and acting. And put your mind, your heart, and your soul on God that you might make these five steps and many more steps toward the kingdom. Earlier it said, order my steps, Lord. When you trouble on every side, when you're pressed, when you bow down, ask God to just Touch your life. Touch your way. And most of all, make a way out of no way. And I declare when your traveling days are done, you feel like not only going on, even in the midst of high and low tide, in this life, this too will pass. Amen. And finally, my brothers and sisters, as we get ready to bow down and our knees in this watch care service as we kneel and pray and pray the new year in. <laughs> Pray for the condition of the country. Pray for the, the new president. Amen. Pray for the cabinet. Pray. That's all fine things that are wrong. Just do what you need to do right. The church is really at fault in a lot of things that have happened. That because we have turned away from our first love. And that is God. God hasn't forgotten us. But many of us have forgotten him. And in the course of that, when the door is open, don't you wait to run into the church. Get up in here and get your life together. Get your house, get your home together. And most of all,
Take these five steps and get ready because eternity is on the way. And when he said he would wipe those tears away, he meant that. In other words, there's no tears in heaven. In order to get there, you got to believe that there is an eternity. With Jesus, that's enough. Three things that I want to remind you of that, that they're all in this life. Before we can walk around heaven, we got to sit a while. Sit a while and listen and see what the Lord is saying. And then you can get up and walk and do the work that he called you to do. And finally, when you do the sitting, do the walking, close it out with stand. Stand, don't stand for anything, but stand for the word of God. And that God will ever bless you. As we go on our knees in prayer, as the clock ticks right on into the new year, I want you to tell God, first of all, and confess that you're sorry, that you haven't done what you should have done in the year previously. But that not only will you do better, but you're going to do more for the kingdom of heaven. Because we bow our heads in prayer. I bid you God speak. I bid you a happy and prosperous new year, prosperous as in spiritual prosperity, that you will know the truth. That Jesus is alive and well. Shall we pray? And as we pray, your family's there. Travel should be limited. You should be home. Everybody should be home. On their knees, praying this new year in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come at this very hour, this very moment, as we're gathered around on the table as a dinner. And many things have been set before us, but we vow for this moment, Father, in total sorrow, God, to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you for our rough times. Thank you for the times that are, uh, are coming, but we, we want to take out of the equation time itself because you, you are from eternity to eternity. There is no time in between. Man is the only thing that has a problem with time. But you control everything, Father, as we early thought felt and came into existence. It was your will and your way. Before we even knew that we would be born, you already knew it and had preordained it. We thank you for what you've already done, for, for this year that you've sent us through, for the previous year, but we look forward not only to 2021, but we look forward to many years or more, Father, until thou shall come again. It's not about time of living a long life, but it's about getting closer to you. Draw us nigh unto you. Now touch every home that needs healing, every marriage that needs working, every circumstances, Father, that, that needs to be lifted up. But Lord, we, we know that we're not alone, that you're always with us, but be with the young as well as the old. And Father, look unto those, Father, who have aged down through the years that you've guided and allowed the moments to roll on a little, a little while longer. But for every new child, that is born. Let them be born with a double birth, being born again under a home and a family and a parent that loves them and shows them the way of God. Now, Lord, as we click off and click into uh, this new year, order each one of our steps that we need. Step by step and take these five steps into eternity until thou shalt come again. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I would say travel safely, but you don't have nowhere to travel. And you should be home listening to this message. Even as we are here with you and to every home, every household, we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to go through every room. Drive Satan completely out of the place and allow God to give you that new birth in the years, days, and months to come as you build your relationship. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Lord, Keep us before you as you open up church doors around America, as you open up First Baptist, as you open up the county, as you open up other lives. Let us be disciplined about what we do. And even in the months of father, let us be cautious about still wearing the mask, about still taking temperatures, about still keeping our distance until you tell us to pack up and get ready for a free and free and awesome life of serving you. And then from that point on, that point on, God, let us hold that, lift our hearts, lift our hands high, and you will know that we are your children. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. May God bless you. Our announcer will be bringing some announcements for you coming into the new year. Be prepared to continuously march. 
stay put over the holiday and stay out of trouble. Eating, drinking, and getting crazy and stupid is not the answer. Watch your health. Watch what you eat. Watch what you take into this body. Because you're holding something that belongs to God. That is the Holy Spirit. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thank the ministers again tonight in our recording. The ministry there. Brother Her and all that have come. That we may have this watch care service televised around and across America and the county. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Good morning. And God bless you. Due to the COVID-19 uptick, the pastor has decided to postpone entering the sanctuary until a time he deems safe. We pray that we can return soon. This is an effort to keep everyone safe due to the rise in COVID-19 cases. Please be on the lookout for more announcements on Facebook, our website, or one call. Romans 12.12 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. The watch night services will be pre-recorded for the safety of our parishioners. It will be played December 31st at 11 p.m. This is so everyone is at home with your families as the new year comes in. Even though vaccines have been approved, please remember to stay safe and continue to practice mask wearing, washing of hands, and social distancing. If you would like to give any donation to the church, please mail them to First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 467, Harrisonburg 22803. We now offer online giving through tithe.ly. You may download the app from the Apple or Google stores. It is the green app. Create an account. Look for First Baptist Church, Harrisonburg, Virginia. If you are not a member, Please download the app, create an account, and in the zip, place 22802 and look for First Baptist. Correspondence has been sent out to this about this to our members. Please create an account and give freely to First Baptist Church. Over the next few weeks, we'll be blessed by the pastor's desk from one of our many ministers on staff. Your praying needs, if you have any, you may contact our ministers deacons or deaconess. May the Lord bless and keep you during this trying time in our nation. Once again, thank you for listening to and watching Faith is Alive Ministries featuring First Baptist Church, Harrisonburg, Virginia with the Dr. C.E. Williams, Senior Pastor. Amen and amen. We're praying that you receive the word of God as you, uh, as you apply it to your life and to uh, your families and your homes and as you go about to our Father's business, doing the will of God, God came by and visited us on today, and we, we, we not only appreciate His presence, but we love the things that He does within us as we search deep within our hearts. We invite you to, uh, to give your life to Christ if you don't have a church home or don't know Him as your personal Savior, uh, amen, to come into the fold of Christ that you may know and be a good steward, become disciples. Uh, we're not a church members, but not a whole lot of disciples. We're asking God to, to strengthen us in that process that we may understand and know. Find a place of worship, get to it, a good Bible learning uh, classes, teaching, Sunday school, and get ready for uh, His coming back again. I want you to stand by now for some announcements coming from uh, our media ministry lead, uh, Brother Hearn, and he will let you know exactly what God has in store for you since so you may want to minister to with either and or make uh, donations as you see fit. So if I would leave anything with you on today through prayer and supplication, amen. We want you to remember Psalms 91. Not to read the whole uh, Psalms itself and, and allow yourself to just get loose and just get into it. And what I love about uh, this particular psalm, it, it really makes you feel good when you know that God not only is present, but you can feel the presence of God uh, in every aspect. Uh, look what David says. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the, the shadow of the Almighty. And he says, makes this so specific, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. And amen, he's my God. 
In him will I trust. So we invite you to just trust God. Trust him in the deepest portion from your soul up through your heart and allow your mind to be focused on him and day in and day out. May God bless you. We'll see you on next Sunday. Stay tuned. Have a great week. Stand by for our Bible study later on uh, during the week. Amen. We invite you to just enjoy the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day on behalf of the First Baptist family. And amen. First Lady, myself, and family, we bid you Godspeed. Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. If you would like to become a partner or sponsor with our TV ministry, please write to Faith is Alive Ministries, First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia, 22802. Or visit our website for more information on how to become a partner or sponsor. Our services are every Sunday with Sunday school starting at 9.30 a.m and worship services beginning at 11 a.m. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Contact us on the web at firstbaptisthbg.org or send us an email to fbcharrisonburg at verizon.net. Stop by and visit where the motto is, everybody is somebody. If there's anything we can do to help you on your Christian journey, please feel free to contact us at Faith is Alive Ministries, First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia, 22802. Or call us at area code 540-434-3969. You can see us here every week at the same channel, same time. Remember, we are one body, many members. May God richly bless you and your family. Once again, thank you for watching Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast.